Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Joni Young here and I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint these roses growing over the fence. We're working on a 16 by 20 canvas today. I've primed once with white acrylic gesso and I've got my large number 50 blending brush here slash filbert brush, black sap green and light green permanent. Now what I'm going to do is just do a bunch of brush strokes all different ways, crisscrossing, straight up and down, across, diagonally, all over the place, leaving a few areas that I'm going to come in later on with my lighter color. Um, this is just going to give us that uh, broken up, out of focus background, uh, perhaps trees, foliage, lots of leaves uh, back there in the distance. By making this really blurry and out of focus, it's going to draw our eyes into the flowers and the fence posts in the foreground. So once I finish doing all these brush strokes, I'm going to switch over to a mop brush and then I'm going to be creating soft little circles in between and filling in all those little gaps. Uh, and at the same time, what it's going to do is make everything really soft and blurry and hazy sort of looking. And that's going to be a really, really simple, easy way to learn how to do a background like this, guys. And keep in mind, you can do this with any colors that you want uh, for future paintings. Uh, it's super easy and simple for any stage and level of painter that you are. So you can see here, I've got one of my little makeup brushes, uh, mop brush, and you can use any size that you want. And you can use, if you don't have a brush like this, you can use any other brush um, that's uh, kind of on the big side and just do those circular motions, circles uh, in one direction and then the other direction um, and just come in. I'm only using my light, light green at this point. Now some of the other colors on the canvas are still wet so I'm able to get that nice soft blend look but you can still achieve this if your paint is dry already. You're just going to go over it and kind of layer over um, and then I'm going to make sure this is all dry before I start coming in with my leaves for the roses. And for the roses, I'm going to be using some phthalo blue, black, and some sap green, as well as that light green permanent with one of my little baby filbert brushes here. And you can use a round brush, a liner brush, a little flat brush. There's a lot of different brushes that you can use. So feel free to experiment if you don't have a little brush like the one I'm using here. What I'm doing is I'm pushing, wiggling, and then letting off to make the ends of the leaves pointy and smaller. I'm going to um, pick my brush up and turn it in different directions for all those leaves so that they're not all going the same way so you want them to be very wild and random looking and then I'm going to come in and highlight the inside of some of the leaves with my light green permanent so I'm going to do many many different leaves different sizes different tones alternating between or with all of these colors here that I mentioned and I will be having a full list of all the colors and brushes just look below this video in the description box guys Okay, it's time to start coming in with our fence posts. Now I'm using a small flat brush for this to get those straightish kind of lines, but you guys know me, I'm kind of imperfect with my lines. I like to be very free flowing and have sort of imperfect lines, but the flat brush is a good one to use for creating boards and lines uh, for rows like fences. So I'm using my light ultramarine blue only. 
a little bit of water just to help that paint flow a little bit more smoothly and easily out of my brush and I'm going to kind of bring the fence post up into a bit of a point or kind of like a diamond shape at the top and then just go straight down keeping them quite close together but spaced out just enough that we can see a hint of that background in between the posts and when you get close to the leaves you're kind of just going to add a bit of that blue in and around where the leaves are you can go over them but keep in mind you'll have to cover that area back up with a few more leaves but it's okay either way you do this and so i'm just going to keep on going along i'm going to um, make it look like the fence is kind of coming up and then going down and then gently going back up again so you don't have to make it completely even give it some flow and some whimsy by doing this guys Okay, so I'm almost done with my blue part of the fence. And the reason why I didn't mention this earlier, the reason why I'm doing blue first is because it's complementary to the next color we're gonna use for our highlight for the boards. And it's gonna be tinted white with my neon orange by Holbein. Um, the light ultramarine blue is also very complementary to the green going on in this painting. All these colors work really nicely together. So I'm gonna apply the peach color that I just made over most of the fence posts, leaving a little hint of that blue for a shadow on the right side of each of the posts. And you'll be able to see a little bit of it bleed through each of the posts too, especially once it dries, you'll uh, be able to see that color just a little bit more. And overlapped with the orange, it creates almost a bit of a pinky violety color. It's just the type of orange that I'm using. Um, so it's a really, really nice combination, but you can do just straight blue and white for your fence. You can even do uh, gray for your under painting for your fence. It doesn't have to be blue. Uh, another alternative, a beautiful one would be purple. So you could do like a violet or dioxazine purple. Um, you could also use cobalt. I've got lots of ideas. So if you guys don't have this specific shade, just ask me and I'll jot down uh, in the comment section here a few other alternatives of colors that you could use. So I'm just going to pull through up and down going over these fence posts until I get right to the end on the far left side and then we'll come in with our next step.
Okay, just finishing up the highlights on these fence posts, I'm now gonna come in between some of the fence posts with a dark color. Um, this is gonna create more contrast and depth behind uh, each of these fence posts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in between with my dark colors. So you can use a little bit of black, blue, sap green again. I'm just gonna add just a little bit more of my tinted white here before I go ahead and do that. And then I'll turn my brush sideways and you'll see I'll use it at the end to make those skinny lines that will fit in between each of those fence posts. So right here, and we'll just do a few here. I'm not gonna go down in between every single one, uh, though you can if you want, but I think it looks a little bit more natural to have it in just a few areas rather than the whole way. All right, for our next step, I've got another mop brush here. This is a large one. It's a one inch uh, mop by Princeton, just in case you're curious. Without getting it wet, I'm gonna tap right into my sap green, blue, and black, and just start tapping in, uh, leaving those little spaces. That's why I like to use the mop brush because it won't be completely solid. You'll get that foliage, fluffy, uh, 3D looking foliage, bush shape, with a little bit of the light peeking through. And so we've got that basic shape now um, and that large coverage. So now I can come in and start creating individual little leaves again with my small filbert brush, the exact same way and technique that we did uh, the first time over there on more towards the right side. So the paint I'm applying is a little bit of this white, light permanent green, and then into my dark colors just so that, and I'm not over blending because this way I'm gonna get all these different tones and highlights and uh, hues happening um, naturally and organically. And as the paint dries, I'll be able to add more highlights and more shadows if I want. Now we even wanna have a few little leaves here poking through and just have these roses really just kind of exploding and growing wild and um, kind of just rambling over the fence. So I'm gonna just continue to add lots of little leaves here and there. And I'm occasionally just gonna go in between and along the side here just to build up a little bit more depth uh, on these little fence posts. And I'll just continue away here with all my little leaves and foliage, building this rose bush one leaf at a time. And then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of highlights here and there as well. Just pushing, tapping, keeping it very loose, not hesitating I'm not stopping and thinking about it too long about my placement I just want to keep it keep moving and keep the flow very natural and just free flowing like I said earlier that's the best way to kind of just stay in the moment and bring that life to your paintings sometimes when we stop and hesitate and and think too long and plan too much out you're kind of taking away the joy and the the moment of uh, creating something. Um, so try to just lose yourself in what you're doing and think less about um, the painting that maybe is uh, intimidating you or stressing you out. Just kind of go for it and look back after and decide if either something that you want to go back and, and change. Um, but uh, trust me guys, because I think you're going to be, you're going to find a new way to paint and discover that you're a happier painter and your paintings look a little bit different uh, just by doing this. So I'm gonna go in between these fence posts here and I'm gonna finish up these leaves. And I'm gonna start coming in, adding a few more shadows, little flicks and flecks of my phthalo blue sap green, a little bit of black. And then we'll start coming in with some more highlights. I'm gonna bring in some light right above uh, the top of the rose bush itself. I'm going to be coming in right here with more of my light permanent green. And I was very tempted to add some sun rays because I love my sun rays. You guys know that. But I didn't do it. I just wanted to create a glow and a kind of a romantic light and atmosphere uh, around the rose bush on the top. So you'll see what I do here in a few minutes. 
And now for the roses, the color I'm going to be using is uh, my neon pink. And I've also got some neon rose. And those are by the Holbein. I'm coming in with some of my, my highlights here, guys, and little um, uh, stems for some of the roses. So I'm doing all these little taps and flicks and then pulling and gently flicking, creating little scoops, kind of dancing around with my paintbrush. Uh, again, keeping it very loof, loose and adding uh, that, that life to all of the the little leaves here in and around the bush and yeah just building up some layers here of more leaves keeping it blurry at the same time and brightening up some more areas here at the top now what this is going to do is it's going to really make uh, the contrast stand, stand out even more in the foreground where all those leaves are that we're going to be applying our roses to uh, but like I said earlier for the roses, I'm going to be using the rose uh, and the neon pink. So neon luminous rose and pink. And it's by Holbein, but you can use any colors that you want. So this is just what I like, and this is kind of what spoke to me today. I decided to go with these colors. They do look really nice with green. They are complementary. You could use any red. That would also look really beautiful. Um, and you could even make any flowers that you want. They don't have to be roses. You could do hydrangeas. You could do sunflowers. So you could paint this, do this painting a few different uh, times and try... Uh, different flowers each time and then you could have a whole series of them that would be quite fun so I'm just going to keep coming in and around the leaves adding more light and more shadow more leaves more depth all of that stuff and then I'm going to be switching over and you'll see in just a few minutes, I'm going to switch over to a liner brush. I'm going to choose a few, maybe three to five uh, of the leaves to outline loosely with my liner brush. And then I'm also going to be adding a little line through some of the leaves. So just a few of them will have a little bit more detail than all the rest. And I thought this would just kind of be interesting to change up some of the leaves so they don't all look exactly the same. So you'll see that in just a few minutes. And I'm using a liner brush. It's one of about four new ones that I got from the Princeton uh, series or brand. I really like my Princeton brushes. And you can get them, well, I'm sure you can get them on Amazon, but I got mine at Michael's. And I get a lot of my brushes at Michael's. Um, some of the brushes that I use are makeup brushes. The only makeup brushes that I use are uh, most of my mop brushes. Now I do have the exception and in this video I used one of each. I used one of my mop brushes that's a makeup brush and the other one has got the black end on it and the blue handle. That one's by Princeton. Um, but I do find that I like the makeup brushes better. They're softer. And the Princeton one is a little bit messier looking. So sometimes we want sort of an unruly looking, messy, uh, overgrown hedge or bush. So it, it's why I like to use both. I kind of switch back and forth. But here you can see, like I said earlier, I'm outlining some of these leaves, adding a little bit of a stem and a line through the center for uh, just a little bit more detail and to just change it up and make it look a little bit more interesting here. Now before I add my roses, I'm going to pull a few little stems and vines in with this liner brush while I have it. And I'm using a bit of water and my dark colors, which are black, blue, and green. Now you can also add a highlight if you want. And for your highlight, you'll use uh, either white with all those colors or light green permanent. So right there, I'm using my light green permanent with a bit of white keeping those lines really thin and skinny for the stems. Now I've got a round brush. It's clean, a little bit wet, taking a scoop of my rose, luminous rose, a little bit of pink, and I'm just gonna create these swirly circles for the base. This is the first layer, just the base of our roses, and it already looks pretty and it's exciting. I love these colors. I love the way it's playing on that deep, rich green with that hint of phthalo blue underneath. 
and I'm going to make these all different sizes, but we're going to have some really big, these are like triple blooming roses. They just almost like peonies. They just have so many petals and that you can make them as swirly as you want, you know, and sometimes in this video, you'll see me use a few different brushes. So sometimes I'm going to be using uh, my filbert rake brush and that is to create a whole bunch of lines for all of my petals and ripples all at once i wanted to try that to see how effective that would be and so that's another thing that you can do or a technique that you can use to build up the layering effect of these roses but right now i'm, I'm just using my little round brush and I'm creating some highlights, lighter shades of petals with a bit of white. So just highlighting the pink and the rose with white, always changing it up. You really can't go wrong here. Just alternate. The only thing you don't want to do is make your roses solid. So you want to have hints of all of those colors in there, the white and the pink, the rose, uh, and any in-between shades that you can get so it's just really really fun this is actually one of the easiest ways to paint a rose so don't think too much about it and stress I know a lot of people are really intimidated by painting roses but when they're really messy and growing over a fence like this and and they're not too too close up then you can get away with being messy and it'll still look really pretty and kind of romantic and and like a beautiful English old English garden with lots of charm to it and don't forget to make them smaller and have those uh, little ones kind of poking through and, and up front in front of some of the fence posts. Okay, so after doing this for a little bit with my round brush, I'm going to add a few more roses and I'm going to pick up my little filbert rake brush or even tail brush and just kind of demonstrate and show you guys that you can get a different kind of a look and create a lot of layers and depth by using a brush like that. It's a lot easier to do that than to take a liner brush and do every single line. So right here you can see and a little bit of water and white paint is all I'm using. The pink is still kind of wet on those roses. So it's just really fun. And you know, I got this brush along with a fan rake brush um, at Michael's. So all I'm gonna do here guys is just keep doing the same thing. It's very repetitive, but I'm gonna do the same thing to all the roses, highlighting, adding more depth, highlights and shadows, the pink, the white, and the rose. And then adding a little bit more of my light green permanent, more highlights on everything and more shadows on everything. So I'm just going to be repeating all of the same techniques. And I hope that you guys really enjoy this one. 
that you want to paint along with me, I recommend joining my Facebook group. It's a private group. You have to request to join and agree to the rules. And it's a fun, supportive, uh, welcoming group where you can share your versions from my tutorials. And I'd love to see them. So go ahead and check that out in the link below, as well as Patreon, where if you want to make a small contribution of any amount, I'd really appreciate it to help fund all of the time it takes to make these videos for you guys, which I do enjoy so, so much. So I'll have a link down there below this video for both of those. And I'm coming in here now with a little bit of white and adding lighter colors of roses that maybe haven't totally blossomed yet. They haven't completely fully bloomed and making them just kind of off white. I'm also taking this rake brush just to add a pattern on a few of the posts here to make it look more like a, a wood grain. I thought this might be kind of fun. I just really have fun playing with this, this little rake brush. I think you guys are gonna like this brush too if you don't have one yet. Check that out at uh, Michael's or online. I'm sure they you can find them probably at Amazon or um, any art store that you go to, fine art stores. So back over to my liner brush, black and phthalo blue, a little bit of that light green permanent. I'm gonna start adding some more depth here i want to build up a little bit more contrast and shadows to make some of these roses really stand out even more so i'm just tapping different directions pushing and tapping and pulling wiggling nothing too fancy All right, so I'm gonna add a few more little stems and vines here, and then I'm gonna pull my brush through between some of these fence posts to add some more shadow and some more depth, again with my phthalo blue, a little bit of black, and some sap green. I'm going to add a few little hints of that dark color around some of the lighter flowers, almost outlining but not completely outlining, just making it look a bit more natural. Now back over to my tiny little filbert brush. I'm going to take light green permanent and a little bit of white. I don't want my brush loaded up with too much paint, but I want enough there to work with and add a few more. Um, sunlit leaves and then a few little uh, little flecks with my brush just to create a bit more of a soft magical misty glow back there and I'm going to go around all the flowers above to create that light and then add a little bit more highlights to some of these leaves here and I'm just about done this painting this was really, really fun and enjoyable to paint. And I think I said this earlier in the video, it would be fun to paint this scene, this fence, and a few different times and, and try it with different flowers. I think it would look quite, quite pretty to have a whole series of these. Uh, maybe next time, uh, maybe you guys can leave in the comments below what flowers you'd like me to try next time uh, for this fence. And uh, I have a few ideas, but I'm curious to see if any of you guys will um, comment down below with your suggestions, the same kind of flowers that I'm thinking of. So I'm going to add the last bit of highlights and shadows here on these flowers, a little bit more white, a little bit more rose, just kind of balance everything out and make sure that I've got enough light and shadow and color. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. And if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. When I hit 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. So you watching right now, if you're subscribed to my channel, you have a chance to win one of my original paintings. Um, the lucky winner will be chosen live during one of my uh, live chats here on my channel. So good luck, everybody. And I will see you guys next time in a brand new video. Take care, everybody. Bye.